Welcome back to Seeker Strength and welcome back to Seeker Stand's Department of News Bringing on Positive Drug Tests. So what we have is a recent spate of positive drug tests in CrossFit. We have a couple of them recently in quite a short period of time due to the CrossFit semi-finals going on. And we've had this kind of appearance of a couple of different positive drug tests from these CrossFit athletes. Now, the reason we're talking about this is not really, we're not a CrossFit news show, but I did want to talk about it today in regards to how it highlights the current charade or theatre we're under when athletes in elite level sports test positive for performance enhancing drugs. So first up, we've got Phil Toon. So let's talk about Phil Toon's scenario. Phil Toon broke this story himself in his own Instagram story. He talked about testing positive for metabolites of Mastron and Nandrolone. Now, he said the tainted supplement story, which I think, you know, the usual one we hear, and that's what we always kind of get from people. But the interesting thing from his, and I thought it was a little bit funny, a little bit comical, is that he tested positive for these metabolites because he was taking finasteride. Now, he was taking not underground bunk or underground, not underground finasteride from a lab that he didn't know. This was doctor prescribed finasteride. So he's finasteride from his doctor, prescribed for him, pharmaceutical grade finasteride, had nandrolone and masteron in it. What fucking brand of finasteride is this? So I can go and not get some. This is so funny. I think it's just like, could you not have made up something else? So essentially he's saying that his finasteride had nandrolone and masteron in it. Two different kinds of pharmaceutical performance enhancing anabolic drugs were in his pharmaceutical drug. I just don't know, like, that That to me is, like, extra funny in this scenario, you know? Like, could you not have said you just took something from a friend and you can't even remember what it was and you think that's where it is? Don't say you're finasteride from your doctor. That's just too blatantly obvious. So Phil Toon, qualified for the Games, a runner-up for the, uh, at the Granite Games, and he qualified for the CrossFit Games. So he's the first, a little bit funny, not gonna lie. The second is Nicholas Joel. Nicholas Joel admitted self-admitted to taking performance enhancing drugs now nicholas said in his instagram post that he took these for precisely two weeks now he said this uh, because he was in a dark period he wasn't happy how he was training he was going during the open and he said he wanted something to get his fitness back to a good level so remember it was only for two weeks he admitted this himself as far as i'm aware he hasn't failed any drug test but he did say that he did this. He admitted he came out with himself and said this. But again, it was only for two weeks. It was not for any longer than two weeks. We can definitely be sure of that, that he did not take that any longer for two weeks because there's no way you'd take drugs for longer than two weeks anyway. Then the next scenario, so there is... So Liz Byrne is the next case. So she tested positive for GW156 at the South African... CrossFit Games Qualifier Team Event. So she tested positive for GW1516, which is a very common drug you'll see used in CrossFit due to its endurance enhancing effects. So we'll see this happen an awful lot. They'll test positive for this particular drug a lot. Now, the interesting bit about her story, and I think, again, the little bit of a kind of the, the funny aspect of her story was that while her urine, or supposedly her urine, tested positive for GW156, the form it was filled out under was actually for a South African male athlete. So she's saying that this wasn't her urine and it wasn't the form she filled out. But there's either been an administrative error, error, clerical error, where it wasn't actually her sample or it was her sample. And she was using these performance sensing drugs, but the form she filled out was incorrect. Either way, the organizer of the event says that the drug testing carried out was watertight and that it it was there was nothing wrong and everything was done to a T and everyone had their chaperones even though apparently there was minimal drug testing so her sample has come back under a different form but they're saying it's her sample and that she tested positive for this lastly then there is pedro martins from brazil he came out on his instagram and said that he tested positive for clomiphene or metabolite of clomid now his video is about 60 minutes long it's in portuguese eu não falo português so I've no idea what he's talking about, but again, any summation from the morning chalk up, he is saying that he's no idea how the substance got in his body, like Phil Toon, he doesn't know what happened. And I think this is kind of funny, is that CrossFit's in a situation where it's put itself in, like all other elite sports, where we're in this kind of theatre, kind of charade, where we have to pretend like everyone doesn't know what's going on. Now, a lot of average community members in CrossFit are blissfully unaware of the state of performance enhancing drugs in CrossFit. 
And you'll see the backlash there under these athletes when they admit to this. So these athletes, unfortunately, are forced to come out with this bullshit story saying they only took it for two weeks or they came out where it was in their doctor's prescribed drug and they've no idea how they got there. They, there's no idea how there's clomid in their system or they've no idea how that GW151 was there. And it was clearly a clerical error. So it's kind of funny. All of these kind of happened in a very short period of time. And I think it just highlighted the kind of comical nature that these athletes are unfortunately have to go through. Now, it's unfortunate that these athletes kind of have to do this because they can't, for example, come out and say they took performance enhancing drugs because they knew their competitors were taking them and they wanted to reach the pinnacle of the sport. And the only way to do that on a level playing field was to also use performance enhancing drugs. They can't say that. They can't come out and say that. They have to come out and say something like it was in a tainted supplement or I have no idea how it got there because one, the backlash from the community in CrossFit is usually particularly severe. In other sports, for example, Olympic sports, Olympic weightlifting, it's just kind of like, eh, so another person tested positive. It is what it is. They'll be back in a few years. It's very often people will almost lament that athletes testing positive and, and uh, being gone for a while. It's such par for the course, which probably isn't great either. But in CrossFit, you'll see a lot of the social media posts. People will be vigorously and absolutely murderously hating these people, even though they will have Bible quotes in their Instagram bio. They will still be attacking these athletes as aggressively as possible, which I think is kind of funny. Then the other scenario, of course, is these athletes are in countries where performance enhancing drugs are illegal and you can't just admit to using illegal drugs and taking illegal substances and buying illegal substances and being in possession of illegal substances. And that's very fair. You can't admit to that. And, you know, it's uh, it's definitely not a positive idea. It's not a good thing to expect someone to do. And it's very fair. I don't blame these individual athletes. They're not going to be able to change the system. But I did want to make this video today because I thought, for me, it really highlighted this kind of comical scenario we're under where we all know what's going on. We know what's happening. But we all have to pretend like, oh, yeah, that's what that is. And we all have to pretend that these other elite athletes who are better than them or previously better than them or beating them or in the exact same scenario aren't using performance enhancing drugs. They just train really, 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 really hard. And they've got some good genetics and they just, you know, got that CrossFit programming down. And there is no way that they are also using performance enhancing drugs. A lot of you might remember the Redeemed and Dominant documentary where certain competitors, you know, uh, Shmia Shmir Shmumi and Shmash Major were a couple among others were talking shit on Ricky Gerrard who has now has come back and Ricky of course is a, a clean athlete and I believe he's qualified for the game so correct me if I'm wrong but they're in the scenario where we have to pretend like he's clean as well so it's, it is funny it's such a strange scenario where we're in where we all know what's really going on behind the curtain or those of you who are aware are aware of what's going on but then for the average fan they're shocked they are shocked that this is going on. So any random cross with people who stumble on this video, for once you can't attack us when we talk about this because this is not conjecture. These athletes have tested positive for stuff. Everyone can't be taking tainted positive supplements. So, you know, it's interesting. Uh, it's unlikely the other reporters for CrossFit News will talk about it in this particular scenario. So that's why I wanted to add my opinion to it. Again, not blaming the athletes. I wish them all the best. You know, they should just go strong, man. Stop testing people. Just forget about it. You know, you don't need to do it. It's clear what's going on. In fact, it's more unfair on individuals now because certain individuals are being used as sacrificial lambs or other larger, more popular names then are getting away with things almost certainly because of political power or their name draws them in. You know, they're not going to test certain people positive. Also, a lot of people had the, you know, the IQ to reach out to someone who knows what they're doing in relation to passing drug tests and they then did not fail these drug tests, hopefully, as in there's very minimal, very little out of competition testing in CrossFit and very little in competition testing. So your chance of being tested are low, but if you know your test is coming up, it's kind of your own responsibility to make sure their stuff isn't in your system. So an interesting scenario. I thought I'd just highlighted recently what's going on in sport, another kind of another step in this ladder. So let me know your thoughts below. Again, not attacking the athletes. I really respect them for what they're trying to do. I understand that for some people in the average CrossFit, you know, environment, this may seem kind of shitty and terrible, but they're just trying to win. They're doing the sport of CrossFit, not the actual local deer watt, random watt CrossFit. So um, there you have it. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts below.